You know, it feels really weird to go out there and make a video specifically dedicated to a fourth line Vancouver Canucks guy, because for a lot of the past few years, the Canucks fourth line guys have not really been too significant. Like, I'm sorry, I love Derek Dorsett, I love Tyler Mott, we actually made a few videos about Mott, okay, I kind of take it back, but like, new guys on the team, the Beagles and the Ericsons, like, these guys kind of... There wasn't really too much to talk about with them. There was never really any big victories going on here. But when it comes to this guy, a player who honestly, I feel like the way everything has gone down, it appears that he's made the team. I think it's a very interesting conversation to be having, especially when you talk about where this player was before and what he has eventually evolved into today. Not in terms of his play, but in terms of his attitude and what he is willing to do. Let's talk today about former Colorado Avalanche 6th round pick in the 2020 NHL Entry Draft, Niels Oman. Now, if you've been watching the Vancouver Canucks preseason games, you definitely would have seen Oman by now. But when it comes to his entire profile, I wanted to go over and revisit it because the last time we did so, I don't really think we encapsulated just how much of an impact a player like this could actually have for the team. Niels Amon was born in 2000. He was a February-born dude, so he's just a few months older than I am, interestingly enough. 6'2", 179 is a left-handed center, and he was initially drafted by Colorado in the 2020 draft in the sixth round, so he was a double overager when the Colorado Avalanche selected him 167th overall. This is because in the SHL, Oman was pretty okay, getting three points in eight games, and he was an absolute monster for the J20 Super Elite version of Lekshan's IF. 47 points in 30 games, definitely not bad. As the years progressed, though, Amon stuck around in Sweden. He played two years with the Lekshan's IF, getting 14 points in 51 games in 2021-2022, but when it came to the entire process of him needing to sign an entry-level contract with the Colorado Avalanche, it became apparent that there might have been a difference in philosophy between both of the parties. There was an article published by Daniel Wagner going over a quote from a few months ago, where Anil Zaman said pretty much that if he doesn't make the NHL team with the Colorado Avalanche, he's just going to go back to the SHL. He doesn't want to play in the American Hockey League. This was interesting because, hey, Colorado, I mean, at the time, Kadri, Newhook, McKinnon, it's a pretty stacked team, so anybody going out there straight from the SHL and not really being the best SHL player out there, I mean, he had 14 points in 51 games, it's not bad, but at the same time, it's not game-shatteringly amazing. Anybody who's going out there and saying that they want to spawn in the Avalanche right away after this tenure, it's not really the most projectable thing in the world. So, Oman became a free agent, he signed with Vancouver, and shortly after he signed with Vancouver, we had ourselves a quote from Rick Dollywall saying that he can report, Niels Oman will not be going back to Sweden, and he will report to Abbotsford if he is assigned. This represents a change in the mindset, and him actually saying, okay, well, I mean, I'm here now, if you don't want me to play in the NHL, sure, I'll stick around in Abbotsford, but we'll see what happens. And so far in the preseason, he honestly has been okay. Sure, he's not Ilias Pedersen, he's not Andre Kuzmenko, but he goes out there and the guy works hard. He's somewhat of a freight train on wheels. He's always going. Sure, he doesn't body check people to hell like Dakota Joshua does. He doesn't fight people either. But Niels Oman does the right thing most of the time. He's always going out there and putting in effort. And you could definitely see that when it came to his competence at playing the National Hockey League game at the National Hockey League speed, he was pretty okay. And of course, the guy is only 22 years old, right? So there definitely is some room for growth here, whether that be offensively or defensively, more in a PK role, whatever, whatever. There still is opportunity for a guy like Niels Oman to grow and prosper. And it's easy to go out there and say, wait a minute, you're just waxing poetic about a fourth liner, man. Come on, like it's a fourth line guy. That's not too important to the team. And sure, while that might not be 100% inaccurate, it's been noted slowly everywhere that I'm sort of seeing Canucks coverage being published. It's on Sportsnet 650, it's on other YouTube videos. People are slowly coming around to the idea that Niels Oman is honestly not bad. And for a fourth line guy to have this much of an impact, not just in terms of his fighting or his hitting like Dakota Joshua, it actually makes for a very interesting conversation as to what this means for the team. With the trade of Jason Dickinson two days ago, or 
Yeah, two days ago, that's what it was, yeah. Friday. With the trade of Jason Dickinson to the Chicago Blackhawks, you had yourselves a number of Vancouver Canucks-related NHL analysts saying that this paves the way for a guy like Neil Zaman to make the final spot on center. Dickinson, unfortunately, as we had said numerous times over the past year, is kinda useless. The guy is not good. And so, having a guy that is pretty okay, he's at a fraction of the cap hit, and he's a lot younger too, it makes sense more so to keep that guy around than to give Dickinson up. I mean, you could still debate whether or not it was worth giving up a second round pick to trade Dickinson away for a defenseman that you kind of needed because Travis Dermott has a concussion, maybe, and Tyler Myers is going to be out for two to four weeks, but regardless, it plays in a little bit more when you acknowledge how good Neil Zoman has been. And with the waiver wire being set yesterday, Christian Wallanen placed on waivers, the Vancouver Canucks having a certain amount of players on their squad, it's very apparent that Nils Amon is so close to making this team. He is just barely there by the hairs of your chinny chin chin. He is potentially going to be a Vancouver Canuck to start out 2022-2023. And honestly, good for him. Like, when it comes to Colorado and their center core, I mean, sure, they lost out on Nazem Kadri, and you could debate their bottom six is not really the best. I mean, I get it. New Hook is really good. He's your top six, whatever. But JT Comfer, Lucas Sedlak, you could debate there's some room to move and maneuver around with the Colorado Avalanche. But of course, you know, just the reputation of that team and everything they had accomplished last year, it would be difficult for anybody straight out of Sweden to come in and say, yeah, no, I'm going to fight for a spot to play in Colorado. Not with the Eagles, but with the Avalanche. So for Vancouver, they had themselves an opportunity to add to a pretty stacked center core already in Pedersen, Miller, and Horvat with a fourth line guy that's cheap, that's brand new, relatively in the league, and who has himself a drive and bite to learn the NHL pace, learn the NHL systems, and He's a lot more willing now to go to the Abbotsford Canucks should they decide that's the case they want to explore. It doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime in the short-term future, especially with all the injuries to everybody, but this still appears to be the case. You could say that Curtis Lazar, hey, he could be a center as well. You could say there's some line juggling that can be applied here, especially with Neil Zoman and his skating. He's a very fast, hard worker, so having a guy like that on the wing, especially with a pretty big body like he has, definitely makes for an interesting combo when you combine Dakota Joshua's physical ability and Curtis Lazar's two-way responsibility as a center as well. This is shaping up to be, honestly, a pretty solid forward core when everybody is healthy, with the wingers and Hoaglander and Pud Colson, Pearson, Kuzmenko, Garland, Mikheyev and Brock, and of course you have Linus Carlson, I guess, who happens to be there by default as well. It's honestly a pretty good forward core. And a guy like Niels Allman definitely adds a layer that makes it a lot more desirable than not. This is a tweet that I wanted to end this video off on. It's kind of the reason I'm making this video. The Canucks seeing something in Niels Allman, signing him as a UFA and having him make the team out of camp, represents a significant win for the organization. And, I mean, how many wins has the organization had when it comes to fourth-line guys? The Beagles, the Roussels, they kind of suck sometimes. So, having one that actually works out, and that's cheap, too, this is cool. It reminds me of, oh man, do you remember, what the heck is that guy's name? Adam Cracknell? Yeah, Adam Cracknell. It's like a depth signing that a lot of people think might be AHL fodder or a younger-ish kind of guy. Cracknell wasn't young, but Oman was. And a guy who could potentially become something in the future who makes the team and actually impresses pretty well in training camp and preseason. That's kind of what that reminds me of. So, talk to the comments about your thoughts about Niels Oman and the status of him as a Vancouver Canuck, how he's shown off well enough that he could potentially make the team, and as a first-year eligible rookie, what he brings as a Vancouver Canuck free agent signee who had refused to sign with the Avalanche. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.